Commons, tonight I wanted to talk about comparing groups. I'm sure we're all familiar with the phrase, don't compare groups. It pops up by the dozens, pretty much everywhere, in post replies, comment sections on videos, forum threads, anywhere that you can go for K-pop content, it's there. And sometimes it makes total sense. Why would you want to bring up Red Velvet on a video about Mamamoo's vocals? But other times I feel like it makes less sense on a video ranking group vocals or dance styles, or even discussing non-group specific elements like cute concepts versus badass concepts. You might think, yeah, these are perfectly reasonable places to compare the strengths of groups and their overall contributions to the genre. But yet, like over and over, we see this endless tirade of stop comparing groups. And I get it, I really do. Every idol works hard to debut and perform, and we want to celebrate their efforts and talents without constantly pinning them up against others. Fans feel connected to their idols, and they want to protect them. And while we know that this can be an incredible virtue and a source of connection between fans, I feel like it's also crippling, especially to conversations about the industry and the music and the standards that fans set for themselves, which are three really important things to talk about. The success of the K-pop industry doesn't rely on music quality, it relies on fans getting attached to their idols. So when fans see their idols compared to any other idol, they see it as an affront on something they love. The biggest reason that I see for what I'm calling the comparison prohibition is the idea that comparison furthers fan wars. Now that seems kind of logical. Comparison invites people to paste groups next to one another. All you really need is one person to say, any rapper in EXO can outsing the main vocal in BTS, and you have a bloodbath. <laughs> However, I feel like this idea isn't inherently true. The source of fan wars is, and always has been, extreme fans. Gutting comparison out of our engagement doesn't stop extreme behavior any more than removing all the left turns in New Jersey stops idiot drivers from being idiots. You could do that, and they did do that, and the problem persisted anyway, and now you look like the idiot, New Jersey. Fan wars are going to exist until the end of time, it's the sad truth. If all the mature fans got together at their own K-pop Geneva convention or something, and agreed to never again mention BTS and EXO in the same sentence, would that really stop immature fans from fighting each other? No, and the food would be terrible. Fan wars will occur forever because there will always be extreme fans who want to scream until they're blue in the face that their group is the best group, hell or high water. Whenever they see their group's name and another name in the same sentence, they go all Annie Wilkes and start taking off feet. Everyone hates running into these fans, I know. We get tired and we get jaded and we just want them to shut up and graduate middle school already, come on! I'm 11, so shut the fuck. So when we see someone try to talk about two songs or artists comparatively, all the warning bells go off. The real problem isn't that the analysis of two groups causes fan wars. The real problem is that there are fans out there who aren't mature enough to handle analysis of two groups, especially between one artist they like and another artist they dislike. I feel like when we tell average fans, stop comparing groups, instead of telling extreme fans to stop treating everything like a personal attack, we give that immaturity an excuse, and those fans don't really learn anything. At the end of the day, the war continues. For example, discussing the merits of BTS's vocal line against EXO's doesn't inherently promote fan violence, it's just a discussion about vocals. What everyone fears is someone saying, I prefer EXO's vocals to BTS, and another fan getting mad about it, ensuing in a fight. So we cut off that discussion before it even begins. But the thing is, guys, the party in the wrong isn't the fan who wants to express an opinion about vocal preference, it's the fan who couldn't handle that opinion like a rational human being. As a fan base, do we actually want an environment that silences different viewpoints out of fear of angry fans? Think of it like this. Instead of don't compare groups, maybe don't cater to oversensitive fans. Maybe don't say, stop discussing the differences in the music of two artists and let people compare and contrast and have their discussions. Instead, tell immature fans, don't approach every comparison like the mob is coming for your crops and you need to set the farm on fire! Richard, run! Help! Let them know.
know that if they want to be included and they want to be heard, disrespectful behavior needs to stop at the door, so to speak. Immature fans who scream at you aren't cute and shouldn't have their hands held. This obsession with stopping fan wars actually silences commentary. Comparing groups, when done right, actually hinders fan wars because it encourages objective thinking and promotes difference of opinion without fear of retaliation. When we can all look at idols, discographies, and performances objectively, we push out the space for immaturity. And that still leaves room to gush over your faves because, hey, that's a pretty big point to K-pop as well. Immature fans will always exist. We know that. With the power of the internet, they can jump into conversations, drop bombs, and vanish. These people largely want attention. Trolls, screechers, and people who seek out online beef don't care about discussions or having a good time. They care about making the biggest scene possible. And so I think that a big part of stopping fan wars is to just not react. If they want to piss themselves, let them piss themselves. If they want to act like kindergartners, they can damn well be treated like kindergartners, Richard. Okay, so something that needs to be defined is the line between analysis and smearing. What is critical comparison and what is fodder for fighting? The internet is largely run through text, visual words typed out, sent, and done. So the words people use to express themselves can tell you who wants to talk and who just wants to rant. If you read a comment that says, Red Velvet is better than Twice because Twice is cringy, that's not commentary, that's just an unsupported opinion thrown into the void. Commentary is something like, I prefer Red Velvet as a group because they have a dual concept of Red songs and Velvet songs, whereas Twice focuses on one style. Or, I like Twice better because their songs always make me happy, whereas Red Velvet tends to have some darker concepts. This also brings in where opinion and preferences inform comparison. We can like different things. Some people hate the cute concept, other people love it. Some people prefer groups that focus on one specific sound. Others prefer groups that switch it up each comeback. For example, if you prefer groups that have more suggestive lyrics and a more sensual focus, that informs a comparison between groups of that style. But you can't label twice as talentless just because you don't personally like color pop. That's not comparison, and it's not accurate either. If you don't like chocolate ice cream, don't eat it. What a lot of fans don't want to think about is that when we open up the conversation for genuine analysis, everything is debatable. The things we love might be contested by other people, and the things we dislike might be praised. At the same time that I say something like, Girls' Generation is the most important girl group, someone in North Dakota can say, Girls' Generation is unoriginal, whereas Miss A had more to offer to K-pop. And yeah, that might sting my heart a little bit, but that doesn't mean that Fargo K-Pop Lover 500 is laying siege to my city, and if I don't defend it with my dying breath, Girls' Generation will be swept into the dust, Richard! The thing that I call schlock? You're allowed to like it. You're allowed to love it and feel like it's the greatest piece of art ever made. I don't really get the buzz about the Mona Lisa and I think that Nighthawks is a far superior painting. That's just my analysis. And it's the same in K-pop. When I bring in other groups to say why I think something is schlock or not up to par, it's because I have a standard for what I like and what I don't like, and what I think is creative and what I think is lazy. You're perfectly welcome to say that you disagree and show me why. But shutting down the conversation before it even starts because some immature fan might throw a tantrum is honestly just detractive. And the more I hear that excuse, the more it sounds to me like you're afraid that maybe, just maybe, I might have something relevant to say about your favorite group. When we silence comparison, we just hurt ourselves in the end. If you don't like a comeback but you praise the group anyway, they're gonna keep making music you don't like. Blind loyalty and isolating artists are all symptoms of obsessive fanship. And the last thing we need is more fields of flaming crops or witch hunts. Maybe I wanna say something like this. I don't like Twice's raps because I know what higher caliber raps sound like. That doesn't stop Daehyun from being my Twice bias. Or maybe I don't like NCT's instrumentals because I have a personal standard for what makes an instrumental great. That doesn't stop NCT from having more money than I can ever imagine. I honestly don't believe that there's a person out there who thinks every K-pop song ever made is good and perfect. Everyone has at least one song that we dislike. Whatever song you're thinking of that you dislike, 
you know you dislike it, and you know why. But when you say don't compare, you're trying to sell me this idea that every song is in its own right perfect. How do we create a standard for what's good without defining what's bad? The reason why we know a song is bad is because we've heard a good song. And again, we all have a different opinion on what we see as good or bad, but we have those opinions because of comparison. At this point, the only comparison that's really allowed in this prohibition is a K-pop group against itself. Is this comeback as good as the last? Why not also, is this comeback as satisfying and well-produced as others in its style or concept? Fans push this narrative that all comebacks are perfect comebacks and that all groups have their own light to shine in the industry, which is true to an extent. If we're being generous, each K-pop group has something unique to offer to the table. But believe it or not, being talented and hardworking doesn't mean your music is automatically good and thus shouldn't be touched. I'm sorry to say it, but being talented and hardworking is the minimum requirement for K-pop. It's the most base compliment that people give out to groups. The members are talented and they're hardworking. Yes, and? Comparing groups isn't pitting them against each other. It's looking at a product to determine whether or not you're getting something worth paying for. When you say you prefer Seventeen's dances, you're comparing. When you say you prefer BTS's raps, you're comparing. When you say you prefer Red Velvet's concepts, you're comparing. We've been here for a while, I know. Claps to you for sticking through. I'm gonna leave you guys with three truths. The hard truth. Every single one of these groups are competitors. They are competing in an industry for revenue. And it's not just within their own styles, and it's not just within their own genders. They're all competing, all at once. That's how industries work. TWICE is competing against Red Velvet, is competing against Blackpink, is competing against BTS, is competing against EXO. The K-pop industry runs around money. And not just companies making money, but fans paying money. We're consumers. This is how it works. Cutting off cogent conversations invites lower quality products. When we blindly praise lower quality products, companies can produce content with less effort. And then when somebody protests and we shout, don't compare, we buy the product and we encourage the company to screw us over again. And the cycle begins anew. The sticky truth. When we take discussions about music and production value and make them about fandoms and idols and protecting our favorite group's pride, we inhibit the real conversations that need to be had. We're trying to preserve some imaginary security blanket when we were never under fire to begin with. Our favorite group isn't going to fail just because someone points out the flaws in their music or because someone argues that another group is a better example of a certain quality. When we preach the isolation of groups, music, concepts, whatever, we erode the standard for what's good content and what's, well, utter schlock. If every song, every comeback, every album is beautiful and perfect all on its own, so stop comparing. We give companies that okay to do whatever the hell they want. The simple truth. Art is comparative. Music doesn't exist in a bubble. It's not that some songs are bad, it's rather some songs can be argued as bad. The truth is, art is never on its own. Art touches art. Some paintings are better than other paintings. Some chairs are made better than other chairs. I think we can all agree that it would be really weird to hear a comment like, Oh my gosh, guys, you can't compare Monet and Matisse. Every artist has his own talent. Stop comparing painters! Art and industry work at their best when individual pieces of work touch each other. Art inspires and influences other art, and better art is created when we stimulate the best aspects of each network, or when we break the mold and shoot for something new. And the industry works in favor of the consumer when companies are held to a standard by the work of other companies and other consumers. When I decide what I want to spend my time, energy, and especially my money and care on, I want to know whether or not someone else did it better. So yes, I am going to compare groups. We all should, or at the very least, we should feel free to engage in critical thought without the shadow of other fans looming over us. I can't stop people from saying whatever they want, but I do get to choose what I put my own attention and care on. If the mob wants to come for my crops or burn me as a witch, I mean, hey, they are welcome to try. But personally, I'd rather not spend my time sitting in a bubble with my hands over my ears 
And instead, I'd rather just enjoy what I want to enjoy. That is my argument for this video. What do you guys think? Is comparison more helpful or more dangerous? Is critical analysis worth the risk of immature fans, or are we better off just not comparing anything at all? Let me know what you guys think, and I hope to see you guys very, very soon.